from the heartland of America to every nation on earth. This is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. My, oh my, what a program we have for you today. Some of the headlines that we have for you are astounding. This first one takes my breath away. The Pope says, authentic Islam opposes violence. Are you kidding? We'll go on here. Christians face extinction amid sectarian terrorism. Oh my, I, I can't believe both of those. And then going on to this last one before we get started with the headlines. Wycliffe defends changing titles for God. They have changed the title for God. Oh, Jack has so much to say about that. But I will get into this first headline for you. And, and we've talked about it before, but there's been a subtle movement. Have you noticed this? To promote a redefined image of Christianity. Redefined. Here it is. Chrislam. How missionaries are promoting an Islamized gospel. Now that's uh, redefining Christianity. And I'm going to ask Jack, we've talked about this and maybe you know what Chrislam is all about, but let's have our minds refreshed right now. Jack, would you tell us what Chrislam is, please? Chrislam is the most damnable heresy to ever enter into the realm of Christianity. And on June 26, 2011, ministers met in 32 states to pull together a group they would call Chrislam, the uniting of Christianity with Islam. And I'll tell you, it's a terrible thing. These are two religions that are diametrically opposed to one another as we're going to see today. Now, Jesus predicted this would happen in Matthew chapter 24, verses 5, 11, and 24, when he said there should be false Christ and false prophets. And they're here. In fact, Jesus said, when I return to the earth, will I find faith? No, Luke 18, 8. Why? Because behind the scenes, they're at work. Now, get this very carefully. In Matthew 7, 15, Jesus said, Beware of these false Christ and false prophets, even some of the ministers in your churches, because they are wolves in sheep's clothing, and they're going to try to tear apart believers who really love the Lord Jesus Christ. And he tells what will happen to them in Matthew 7, verses 21 and 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not preached, prophesied, and translated the Bible in your name? and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name have done many wonderful works. Then will I, Jesus, say unto them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, you bunch of apostates. I never knew you. I know my sheep. They follow me. John 10, 11. I never knew you. Jack, you know, you mentioned about translating the Bible. I'm going to allude to that in just a moment. That, to me, is one of the most serious things that we have before us, friends. But this next headline breaks my heart. I'd like for you to take a look at it. Christianity lost. Over the past 30 years, the Christian community has been bombarded with new Bible versions at a rate of one per year. Did you get that one per year? A new Bible translation? While other world religions appear to be holding true to their sacred text, it appears that the Christian church is allowing an unseen force to redefine its heritage. Does anybody care to imagine what would happen to the person in a Muslim country who claimed to hold a new revised version of the Quran, or a person in Israel who attempted to teach from a new international version of the Torah? going on here? Well, we're changing it. Wycliffe defends changing titles for God. My, oh my, we're going to be referring to Wycliffe in just a moment. Now look what they've done. Matthew 28, 19, from this, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they've done this, cleanse them by water in the name of Allah, His Messiah, and His Holy Spirit. They're changing it. 
Well, here you see a beautiful Bible. This is what we stand on, spiritual integrity. Well, I'm going to ask Jack a very, very serious question, friends. I'll tell you, my heart is so burdened today, I think you can tell. Why is Wycliffe and Sill and Frontier so dangerous right now to be changing the Bible and putting these names in that should not be there, Jack? Because this is part of what's coming soon, the one world religion tying them all together. And in order to do it, you have to get rid of Christianity because USA Today recently said, it's the most hated religion in 132 nations of the 247 in existence. Now, what did they do? I have here 91 different times where these groups, Wycliffe, Sills, and Frontiers, removed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And through it, they've destroyed Christianity. They've destroyed the Trinity. They've destroyed everything that's good about Christianity. But didn't the Bible say that would happen? Second Peter 2, 1. There were false prophets among the people, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, secretly, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord Jesus who bought them. How about Jude, verse 3? We are to endeavor to keep the unity of faith. For there are certain men crept in unawares, ungodly men who are turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Son of God. And we're going to have plenty to say about it. Now, what do we call this type of thing? 1 Timothy 4.1, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, evil spirits, demonic spirits, and doctrines of demons. Wow. That's the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to take a stand as a preacher of God, and I don't care what kind of apostasy arises. Turn on Jack Van Impey as long as I'm alive because I'm up in years, and I'm going to take on every apostate, everything that goes against what I love, Christianity and my precious Jesus, the Savior of the world. You know, Jack, there's something that you said a moment ago, foundation of the Christian faith. Uh, now, there has to be a foundation to build anything. So what do you mean by that foundation okay. of the Christian faith? Now, this goes back to the Apostle Peter and the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 16, beginning with verse 13. Jesus said, Peter, whom do men say that I am? He replied, oh, some say you're John the Baptist, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But who do you say I am? Now, I love this. Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven has. And I say unto you, Peter, that on this rock, that I am Christ, the Son of God, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But through Wycliffe, Sills, Frontiers, the gates of hell have started because 91 times, I repeat, they've taken Jesus as the Son of God out of the Bible. And when you do it, you've destroyed everything about Christianity, as you'll see. All right, Jack. Oh, well, when I was growing up as a little girl, my mom and my dad and my church taught there were five things that we had to have and believe in order to be a Christian. The five fundamentals, they called it, of the faith. And of course, Jack, I'd like for you to repeat the five fundamentals of the faith. The deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the death, the sacrifice of the Lord, the bodily resurrection, and the coming again of the Lord. There's five. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. He's going to set up his kingdom. How have they destroyed those five things? Rexella, they did it because the Bible teaches that there was an hour coming when an antichrist would appear. Listen to this, 1 John 2.18, antichrist shall come. But even now, are there many antichrists? He's going to show that there are ministers today in our groups, Protestantism, who are turned away. And says, they went out from us, but they weren't of us. 
if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out and turned their back on it that it might be made manifest. They were not all of us. And get ready for a shock. He adds in verse 22, those who deny this thing about Christ being the Son of God are antichrist. Wycliffe. Seal and frontiers. And I'm not going to spare you. You've done an injustice to the Word of God, to Christianity. You've sent Bibles overseas for the Muslims, and now they love it because Jesus is no longer a deity. Jesus is no longer the Son of God. Now, let me show you about these five points. I'm going to go slowly. This is deep. First of all, Christ did not become a son, for they say the Muslims don't like the idea because Allah didn't have any children, and if God the Father had a son, then he had sex with Mary. Bunk! My Jesus is the eternal God, the eternal Son from all eternity. He didn't start as a son on earth. What? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. His name is Yahweh, but when he works in unison as a trinity, it's Elohim, for I am, as always, a plurality. Who helped create it? Who established all the ends of the earth? What's God's name? What's his son's name? Hey, how long had that son been around? Well, God says he's going to come to earth and be born in Bethlehem. And he was, Matthew 2, 1, but he was from old, from everlasting. Jesus, Micah 5, 2. Oh, this is exciting. So... Who created all the earth? What's God's name? What's his son's name? Proverbs 30, verse 4, Jesus. But there was another person there, the Trinity, and he said, God sent forth his spirit, Holy Spirit, and they were created. Psalm 104, verse 30. Now, to prove that Jesus was always there, 1 Peter 1.20 says that Christ was foreordained before the foundation of the world, before they created this planet on which we live. And Revelation 13.8 says Jesus Christ is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Father said to the Son and the Holy Spirit, one of us must go, for without shedding of blood is no remission of sins, Hebrews 9.22. One of you must take a body and go. Jesus said, I'll go. I'll be that one. Yes, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world and God's plan. Now watch it. Galatians 4, 4. When the fullness of the time was come, the plan to send the Savior, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, Mary, to redeem them who were under the law. Salvation. Now, Gabriel appears to Mary. He says, oh, you're blessed of the Lord. And you shall be with child, and you shall bring forth a son, and call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now listen to that sweet little woman. Verse 34 of that chapter in Luke. How shall this be? I know not a man. I haven't had sex. The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And that holy thing which shall be born of you, Mary, shall be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. So he came. The eternal plan took place. And he's now here because God sent him as the Savior of the world. 1 John 4.14. And he's called in that text, the Son of God. Now, if you don't believe that's enough to prove this to you, that he is the Son of God, and the entire plan of salvation, the shedding of blood and getting to heaven forever, is through Christ. The best known verse in the Bible, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus, can you again tell me that you are the Son of God and that you're the only way to heaven? Yes, John 3, 36. He that believeth on me, the Son, hath everlasting life. He that believeth not on me shall not have life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Can't get around that one, can you? 1 John 5, 11 to 13. 
This is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life. He that hath not the Son does not have life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that hope so, guess so, think so, know that you have eternal life. It's through Jesus. And that's why when our Savior hung on that cross and all of that agony, Romans 8.32 said, God spared not his son. But he died, was buried, and rose again the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 4. That's the gospel. Now listen carefully. I love this part about the resurrection. This is the strongest one in the whole lesson today. Romans 1, 4. Christ is declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Holy Spirit. How? By the resurrection of the dead. You blasphemers that have taken out Jesus as the Son of God 91 times, but he got out of the ministry, the quicker the better. Resign! The harm you've done can never be repaired. You can't recall all those Bibles you sent over to the Muslims that have lied, distorted this holy book. All right. The resurrection. Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and now I'm alive forevermore. Revelation 1 18. Yeah. Christ died for his sins, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. And because of that, he can say in John 11:25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. But wait, there's one more thing. The fifth point is coming again. Remember that prayer we prayed? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Matthew 6, 10, it's coming. Now, get this. This is the most powerful verse you'll ever hear. Hebrews 1, 8. The Father, God in heaven, says to his Son, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The Father calls his Son God because that's who he is. Christ came who is overall God. Blessed forever, Romans 9, 5. Great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. We have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life, 1 John 5, 20. Amen and amen, Rex Ella. Yeah, he came, and he's sitting on that throne. That's what the angel said to Mary that day. She said, how am I going to have all this happen? I don't know a man. And he said, the one you have will be called the Son of God. And he shall sit upon David's throne. And he shall reign over the house of Israel, the Jews, forever and forever. And that, of course, is there again in Luke 1, verses 32 and 33. And here's where it's recorded. He comes. Revelation 1, 7, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. That's not heard with television. Revelation 1, 7. And he comes royally majestically on that white horse in Revelation 19.11. And he comes as the King of the kings and Lord of the lords, verse 16, to rule and reign for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4. And then he's recommissioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. And Revelation 11.15 says, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever, because this world's never going to end. That's the promise of God 120 times in this book. Ooh, what a message. Isn't it wonderful that very soon the world's going to remember at least one of those five fundamentals of the faith, the birth of our Lord. But I want to ask Jack something, and that is this. What should we do about the men who've translated as they have and taken out the five fundamentals? I'm sincere. Every ounce of energy I have in me, I'm going to fight this thing. And I'm calling on the Southern Baptist Convention, 18 million strong. I'm calling on the National Association of Evangelicals. I'm calling on the Assembly of God Movement, one of the largest Pentecostal groups in the world. I'm calling upon Christian leaders who have magazines. Let's get these men out of translating our Bible. Their hands are soiled, and they can never make right what they've done. They destroyed the gospel. And here's what. 
Galatians 1, verses 8 and 9 says, Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the death, burial, and resurrection through the Son of God, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say and now again, if any man preach any other gospel than that Jesus is the Son of God who died for the sins of the world, let him be accursed. And Webster's Dictionary says that means doomed, damned, and burned in the fire. Let's listen again. Romans 16, verse 17, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ, and avoid them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Ephesians 5, 11. Get it. I said it. I repeat it. 1 John 2, 18. Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists. They went out from us. Wycliffe, Sills, Frontiers. All right, but they weren't of us. And here's why. This 22nd verse. Any man that denies the Father and Son or relationship is an antichrist. Why should they run our translation ministry? Oh, yes, Jack, I agree 100%. We all need to do something about it, don't we? Well, we need to be praying, first of all. Let me just say that the five fundamentals of the faith we're going to talk about in just a moment applied to you. Friends, you know I said right up front we'd be talking about the Pope and some of the things that he has been saying that's way out. Well, we really don't have time today. That great message that really blessed all of our hearts, I want to apply to you right now. The five fundamentals of the faith. Do you believe them all? Do you believe in the virgin birth? We're going to be remembering that with Christmas. Do you believe he died for you? Do you believe he can save you if only you'll come to him? Anything in your life he'll forgive if only you'll accept him as your savior. And this is why we've come into your home so that you can open your heart to him. I'm going to ask him right now if he'll elaborate on this and give the invitation and you pray the prayer with him. Oh, what a great time of the year to open your heart to the wonderful Savior of the world. Jack. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, who is with you from old, from everlasting, the eternal Son, to take a body because blood had to be shed for sin. And the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. Your word says, Jesus, I thank you for coming from heaven. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross and crying out in agony and finally saying, it's finished. My work to get people to heaven finished. Nothing else can be added. Thank you, Jesus, for my sin laid on you. I lay it on you. My drugs, my alcoholism, my sex escapades. Oh, there's so many things, Jesus, but you bore every sin. I lay it on you now, Jesus. Come into my heart. Take everything away. Cleanse me. Wash me. Save me, Jesus. I pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh, friends, if you prayed that wonderful prayer of salvation, I would love to hear from you. There's my address, and I trust that you'll be writing me, and I will send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction, how good it is to know. We don't walk alone in this world. We walk with the Lord when he's in our hearts. So write to me. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you. And now, friends, the last 10 days of this wonderful offer, Enemies, of the cross. Take a look, please, at the commercial. The Apostle Paul, who slaughtered hundreds of Christians before his conversion to Christ, was forgiven and chosen to expose the enemies of the cross of Christ. Today, 132 nations proclaim their hatred for Christianity. Who are these ungodly enemies? Atheists, New Agers, cultists, Christian defectors, and Muslims. On billboards, atheists call our Lord a useless savior. New Agers state through Dr. Shookman's course on miracles, promoted on Oprah Winfrey show, that a slain Christ has 
no meaning, so do not make the pathetic air of clinging to the old rugged cross. Worse yet, Wycliffe, Sills, and Frontier Bible translators created a new version for Muslims eliminating Christ as the Son of God 91 times. By doing this, they've destroyed Christianity's message. This act denying that Jesus is the Son of God identifies these three translation groups as enemies of the cross of Christ and Antichrist 1 John 2.22. Why did they do it? Since Muslim invaders entered Jerusalem in 637, they did away with all crosses. That's the way it's been ever since. These 21st century enemies of the cross recently promoted ads on Australian television saying, move over Jesus for a new savior. For a complete study and expose on all these groups, order enemies of the cross. Friends, this is the last 10 days, as I said before, so don't put it off. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. And with your order, I'll be enclosing this beautiful gold cross. So make the call right away. You don't want to be fooled. You need to know who the enemies are. And now here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Enemies of the Cross. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you, Chuck. And let me just emphasize again, 10 days left and with your order, this beautiful, beautiful cross. Don't let your family or your church be deceived. It's all on here, enemies of the cross. You know, now, friends, I would like to just give a tribute to someone very, very dear to my heart that went home to be with the Lord, my brother Don. He fought cancer for over eight years, and he certainly was courageous. And as his beautiful wife, Evie, and I stood over him in the hospital just a couple of nights before, we, um, before he passed, we had the blessed privilege of talking with him and praying with him and assuring him that we would see him in heaven. You know, I was there the day that he opened his heart to the Lord. And anyone who passes from this life into the next that has Christ in his life is going home. How grateful I am that he's not suffering now. He's in the arms of the Lord. How blessed it is to have that wonderful assurance. And I would say to you, are you ready I want to use my brother Don's testimony for you. If you were to have a loved one go home to be with the Lord, would they be ready? We need to certainly look forward to the time that we enter the presence of the Lord, which really leads me to my closing statement I always give you each and every week. Earthly death for a Christian is not a sad ending, but a glorious beginning. How good to know that when he closed his eyes, he was in the arms of the Lord. Well, we'll look forward to being in your home again next week and until then. Remember, God cares for you. So do we, so very much. Bye-bye.